Lawrence, a family of sinners who have been unable to be free for a thousand years in a city dot state swept by the wind of freedom. Haishi, a foreign traveler carrying the great adventure system. What new poems will their encounter compose in the sea of stars? How magical are ingredients from other worlds? I'm really looking forward to it. Occasionally, I also want to find a place to take off the lady's mask and relax freely, okay, it's a great adventure in another world. Little cutie, my library management is short of new books again, ala ala, when can you finish your adventure diary? The person in Tianshuj can't wait. Also, don't forget to bring back colorful dumplings and milk from different worlds, as well as oily bean curd. Haishi looked at the delegates who were about to fill the list before departure, as well as the girls who were laughing and laughing around him, and sighed, I'm going on an adventure, not a vacation. Hey! At this moment, a voice full of wisdom and childishness rang out in his mind. Your mood seems to be a bit low. Do you need to go to the restroom to relax? Keywords of the novel Tivet's Adventurer of the Underworld No Pop-Ups, Tivet's Adventurer of the Underworld Complete Collection Download, Tivet's Adventurer of the Underworld Latest Chapter Reading Chapter 1 Hike Lawrence You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 Hike Lawrence, greetings to you with the morning dew at dawn, my sister. In the majestic and quaint castle, a handsome young man with short sea blue hair sat elegantly with a smile on his face. His tone was gentle and sincere, with every syllable's inflection flawless, perfect like a precision machine. The smile on my face is a bit fake. So, the person he greeted did not give a good expression. What do you want to say, Haishi? The girl, with the same hair color and a slightly softer face that is eight parts similar, was carrying a gorgeous blue sword with one hand and two arms embracing her chest, frowning and looking back. Before the young man could reply, a cold light flashed through the girl's amber eyes. No matter what you want to say, if you continue to use this disgusting tone. How's it going? The young man was completely unafraid and playfully said, Do you want to take note of this grudge? Bang bang. With sky blue as the main body, the front is outlined with a string-like pattern, magnificent like a musical instrument. The sword blades on both sides, like fluttering flags, suddenly fall to the ground like a knife-cutting tofu, effortlessly inserting it into the ground. The girl clenched her gurgling fists and strode towards her younger brother, who was constantly fighting. Even with such a loss of composure, her movements still showed no signs of recklessness or barbarism. Instead, they were as graceful and composed as a dance, even the crisp sound of her heels landing seemed to contain some special rhythm. It seems to her that elegance is like an instinct infiltrating her blood and bone marrow. Don't be so impulsive, right? The young man stopped immediately and decisively raised his hands from the bottom of his heart in a surrender gesture. You are about to become a formal Westwind knight, so don't bully civilians casually, dot. Upon hearing this, Eula stopped and put her arms around her chest, her chin slightly raised, and her half-empty eyes mocked, Are you also considered a commoner? How dare you? The young man leaned back and lazily plunged most of his body into the soft and old sofa, sighing, At least commoners are not born to be tainted with sin and despised by everyone. How dare we expect such good things? It's better to be a millennium-old sinner of Mond and redeem our ignorant ancestors from a thousand years ago. Upon hearing him say this, Yura's anger instantly subsided and her face became slightly ugly. She explained with a hint of panic, I'm not. Of course I know you don't mean that, sister. After all, we are twins. No matter what kind of identity I have, you are the same, Haishi waved his hand and put on his lazy smile again, don't worry, Haishi. Eula's expression became solemn. Miss Chin has agreed to my application to join the Westwind Knights and has received the support of His Excellency the Grand Commander. I will do my best to improve the Mon people's understanding of the family. Eula, after getting to the point, the young man's face also became serious. That's why I came to see you today. 
the Westwind Knights are indeed a good place, especially for the Mons. Your talent is beyond doubt, and if it weren't for the burden of your ancestors, you might not be inferior to the two heirs of the Gernhild or Legenfeld families. But. There is always one thing to be afraid of, but once this word appears, it basically means that what was said before is all nonsense. However, the sins of our ancestors objectively exist. For thousands of years, the Lawrence family has tried countless ways to improve this situation, but you. Do you want me to give up? It's impossible. Eula refused first, and the cold-colored girl was like a proud swan, stubbornly trying to carry the heavy burden of the family on her still weak and frail shoulders. It's not like giving up completely, Haishi gestured to his sister to calm down and not be impatient, it's just that countless ancestors have exhausted their lives to find a solution to this matter. Can we think this way? This matter cannot be achieved solely by individuals or our family's own efforts. What do you mean? Eula pondered. We also need help from other sources, or some special opportunities. The simplest way, if Lord Fengshen is willing to help us say something, wouldn't it be more useful than if we worked hard for another ten thousand years, said Haishi without any hesitation, how dare you think. Eula is speechless. What the Lawrence family did back then was against the will of the Wind God. If they save their lives and inheritance, they should be grateful. Do you still expect him to help speak up? Who are you? Such a big face. Haishi naturally knew that relying on Babados was not very reliable, but the solution always had to be explained one by one. Ignoring Yura's eyes, he continued to analyze, however, the whereabouts of the Wind God Lord are hard to find, and it is also difficult for us mortals to find any way to move a deity. This one does not count for the time being. But if the Grand Commander of the Knights, who is actually the manager of Mond, is willing to help, our situation can easily improve. Lord Farga. Eula murmured softly, her tone resolute as if she was making a promise to someone, I will definitely earn credit as soon as I join the Knights. The girl's mind was quite simple, as if she felt that as long as she had enough merits, the Chief of the Knights would accept her request and come forward to help Lawrence get out of trouble. Haishi shook his head secretly. He knew that even if Eula became the captain of the guerrilla team in the future, and even if the principal of the Shifun Knights was replaced by a more noble, kind, responsible, and impeccable Chin in terms of personal character. But let alone the predicament of the Lawrence family, even Yura's own situation has not improved much. She will still be rejected by most merchants, slandered by the Mon people, excluded by many members of the Knights, and made very few friends. No matter how much credit she has made, the Mon people will not praise her. On the contrary, every time she is promoted or praised, she will face endless criticism and slander. Even if the standard for her to receive these accolades is several times higher than others, what use is that? No one is willing to help her slightly reverse that bad public opinion trend, even if it's just helping her alone. Not only that, there seems to have been a hidden force guiding most of the negative reviews happening in the capital of Mond towards the Lawrence family. Otherwise, it is difficult to explain why the crimes committed by Lawrence's ancestors thousands of years ago have been deeply ingrained in people's minds, traced back to the present day, and held accountable to every new generation bearing the surname Lawrence. Blaming those who truly made mistakes back then for a thousand years or even longer is not a problem. Haishi has seen many such things, such as Qin Hui and others in their past lives. But I have never heard that after a thousand years, someone will express their disgust in person when they see someone surnamed Qin. Even if he knew he was a descendant of Qin Hui, as long as he didn't want to overturn the case for Qin Hui, who would specifically go to make things difficult for him. Not to mention that this is not a private behavior of a certain minority group, but a unified consensus among the majority of Mond. Do you know that even when the northern barbarians entered the border at the end of the Ming dynasty, there were still few inhumane acts committed on the land of the Central Plains? Nevertheless, after four to five hundred years, there were no more people to curse their family descendants. Even more recently, what a heinous crime did the footed chicken commit in Middle Earth back then? 
In less than a hundred years, the voice of public opinion is no longer completely one-dot-sided. You should know that it has been less than a hundred years. Was Lawrence's mistake towards Mon bigger and more serious than the previous two examples? In fact, they just wanted to take advantage of the absence of Feng Shen and do something to restore the old system in Mond, so that they could ascend to the throne. Wrong is indeed wrong, but is it really as serious as the Tartars or Stevens of the past? Isn't it possible? In the history of previous lives, the experience of a president surnamed Yuan who once successfully claimed the title of emperor cannot be said to be the same as that of the Lawrence family. It is simply carved out of the mold. Firstly, they all played an important role in representing the people in the resistance war and made great contributions. Secondly, after the victory of the struggle, they also seized a large amount of real power. Finally, they all reached the point of reversing history to death. And then they were overthrown and overthrown. So, one hundred years later, will there still be people from the Yuan family cursing? No, even most people can dialectically view his life's merits and demerits, and his descendants have not been targeted by any public opinion. But why could Lawrence be hated by countless Mon people for a thousand years without any intention of downplaying it? Is this reasonable? From the perspective of the two generations of Haishi, he only thought of one possibility, some people, it should be said, are part of the old aristocrats who had actual power in Mond and did not want the Lawrence family to turn over. Because they were all people who betrayed the Lawrence camp back then. Who knows if the Lawrence family will initiate a new liquidation against them once they regain power. Of course, this can only be said to be a tacit understanding between them, but it cannot be said on the table. More importantly, most of the senior members of the current Westwind Knights also hope to have the Lawrence family, a widely recognized universal outlet. In this way, no matter what bad happens, just throw it at the Lawrence family. So there's no need to deliberately guide any navy, the Mon people will immediately believe it without doubt. This must be what they did. Is it sad? Indeed. But from the perspective of governing the country, if there were such a universal trash can, it would undoubtedly be an easy task for rulers. Because no matter what happens, there will always be smart people thinking that this must be Lawrence's conspiracy. Be wary of Lawrence playing the Seven Saints summoning card. In this way, the public opinion pressure on the ruling party will be much less. This method is not uncommon, and if there is no suitable trash can inside, it is the same to look outside. So, if you want to improve the situation of the Lawrence family, it's not something that can be achieved by just doing a few good things. Firstly, it is necessary to find a better, or at least not inferior, alternative for Mond. The next step is to find a way to persuade the Westwind Knights to replace the trash can. Otherwise, even if it's just a request, others won't be able to help. Because Mond needs a character with such a positioning, if you don't want to be and can't find someone else to replace him, it's a dead end. There are not many forces qualified to replace the Lawrence family. If the three founding nobles, the Gernhild family and the Legenfeld family, did not suddenly go crazy, then it would be difficult to find a substitute within Mond. Fortunately, according to Haishi's memory, this opportunity will soon appear from the outside. And during this period, it's not a problem for you to strive for merit in the knight's order, Haishi stood up and supported Eula's shoulders with both hands. Their foreheads touched, their eyes met, and their breaths heard each other. But don't put too much pressure on yourself, and don't be eager to help the family. Take care of yourself first, make more friends in the knight's order, polish your swordsmanship well, and wait for the opportunity. Hmm. Eula's ears suddenly turned crimson, and her amber eyes drifted aside, seeming somewhat bewildered. But the next second, she suddenly took action and tightly gripped Haishi's neck under her armpit. The slightly exaggerated slimes squeezed Haishi almost to the point where he couldn't open his eyes. Her fair and delicate fists lightly hit his smelly brother's head, half embarrassed and half emphasizing. I am my sister. The new book set sail, please support us all, end of this chapter. Chapter 2 The Great Adventure Crossing the Starry Sea
You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 2 The Great Adventure Crossing the Starry Sea Good morning, Miss Catherine. As the sun rose, Haishi, dressed in hunting gear and wearing a hood, appeared in front of the Mond Adventurers Association. Is there any suitable commission for me? As usual, Mond people's tasks are not accepted. Welcome to the Adventurers Association Towards the Stars and the Abyss. Catherine smiled and recited her unchanging opening statement, Here are three commissions from Li Yue, Fong Dan, and Ina Wife. Okay, let me take a look. Haishi took over three commission instructions and began to carefully select them. In reality, Tibet Continent is not like in games, where commissions can be picked up randomly and placed on a list to be done slowly. Catherine is a biomimetic robot with no room for compromise. At Haishi's current level of adventure, she can only take one item at a time. There is no other way, although he has already registered with the Adventurers Association, he has very few options due to not accepting the commission of the Mond people. After all, this is Mond, and 99% of the commissions are published by local people. However, since accepting the commission for the first time and being rejected by the other party for the brainless reason of, I won't pay the despicable Lawrence man, despite completing the task, he has made up his mind to never deal with these mentally ill guys again. You don't want to hire me. I'm too lazy to talk to you guys. Haishi is not Eula. In order to restore the image of the family, she can tolerate any slander or injustice to the girl, and always maintains an elegant image to the outside world. As a traveler, even though he lived in the Lawrence family for 16 years, most of the people surnamed Lawrence were not considered relatives by him except for his own small family members, and he naturally did not want to carry this unfounded reputation. He was able to restrain himself from smashing the sunset fruit in that guy's face. Haishi considered himself a mature person, and since he had chosen a comfortable work mode, he could accept even lower efficiency. Therefore, his frequency of accepting commissions later became once a week. Slowly, he also became familiar with Catherine. Sometimes, for less urgent tasks, she would even keep them for a while, waiting for Haishi to pick them up. Of course, Haishi doesn't think it's his efforts or handsome appearance that even the bionic robot can't resist. There is obvious adjustment from Jidong. After all, Catherine is the seventh executive of the Winter Fools. The puppet of Sandon. The headquarters of the entire Adventurer Association is located in Jidong country. And in the Winter country, for the other six countries such as Mond, it was the attempt made. Perhaps they took a casual move after discovering themselves as a Lawrence descendant. But no matter what, this made Haishi's adventurer career much smoother. An illustrator from Inami's wife wants to hire someone to help shoot a set of beautiful scenery in Mond. Haishi opened the first commission introduction and said, where did she want to take a photo? The wind rises on the ground, um, this is simple, and there is also a statue of the wind god. Hmm, although there may be some unpleasant things there, just taking a photo is not impossible. Under the statue of the wind god in Mon City, a large number of people and nuns from the Westwind Church pray every day, and the Lawrence family is naturally not welcome to appear there. The last place is Longji Snow Mountain. Haishi widened his eyes and quickly closed the introduction. What is Longji Snow Mountain? That is the most dangerous area in Mond, with the highest concentration of monsters and the worst climate. Even if we don't talk about monsters, the extremely cold climate there is unbearable for ordinary adventurers, and they have to rely on alchemy potions to maintain normal activities. Haishi glanced at his newly reached life level of LV-25 and could only sigh with admiration. Forget it, I can't afford it, next one. The blacksmith from Liyue wants to purchase some Mon's unique ores. Upon seeing the second commission, Haishi suddenly felt a bit uneasy in his heart. Liyue is a famous country of rocks, with a variety of unique types of ores. Generally, craftsmen from other countries come to them to seek rare ores. If we were to talk about Mon's unique ores, wouldn't it be? He quickly flipped down and, as expected, a familiar name that made one's teeth ache burst into his eyes, 
star silver or I'll drop an old swan. Why do you foreigners love to run to the snow-capped mountains so much? Is the fish in Xingluo Lake not delicious anymore? Or is the scenery at Jushing Cliff not beautiful? Or is the fine wine at Chensi Winery not tasty? Can't we do something that a normal person can handle? Feeling somewhat helpless, he put down the second commission introduction and prayed in his heart while opening the third commission. A scholar from Sumeru, looking for someone to help make spices. That's it. After careful inspection, he found that the raw materials for making spices did not contain anything like snow mint that grew in dangerous areas. He decisively accepted the commission. Okay, then Miss Nazafrin, the client, will be waiting at the deer hunter's doorstep for breakfast tomorrow. Please arrive on time. Goodbye. After bidding farewell to Catherine, Haishi did not stay much in the city of Mond. Instead, he went out to Cape Watch to search for monsters to sharpen his archery skills. Unlike Yura, who inherited the great sword Song Lai, Haishi received a ceremonial bow as a gift after completing the family trial. Therefore, in addition to basic swordsmanship, his major direction is actually royal archery. This is a family tradition of archery developed by the Lawrence family from the divine archery taught by the wind god. While its power is impressive, its archery movements are also very elegant and noble, showcasing the grace and demeanor of a great aristocrat. As usual, after clearing two slime gathering points and an Atukiu human camp, Haishi looked at the panel with no change in proficiency and helplessly said, It seems that we must seize the time to carry out the next extraterrestrial test. The feeling of making no progress after this effort is really unbearable. In the light blue panel above the field of view, rows of data appear clearly. The Great Adventurer System, Name Heishi Lawrence, Age 16 years and 123 days, Life Level LV-25, Talent Seal of Ice LV-1, Skills Shifun Swordsmanship Clan, LV-1, Sacrificial Bow Art LV-2, Lacking Special Energy and Cannot Be Advanced, Primary Alchemy LV-1, Medical Emergency LV-1, Adventurer Experience. LV-2, 1999-2000, Conditions Not Met, Unable to Open the Exotic Trial, I'm just a little short of experience to start the second exotic trial. Haishi took a deep breath and put away the sacrificial bow. If you want speed, you won't reach it. That's all for today, he said night. Lawrence Castle. Eula returned later than Haishi. When she pushed open the door with a tired face, Haishi had already finished grooming and lazily nestled on the sofa, holding a book in the style of Liyue and enjoying it. Upon hearing his sister's footsteps, Haishi turned his gaze and asked with a smile, How do you feel? Your first day at work. Faced with her younger brother's teasing, Eula took off her huge sword from behind and sat across from him with elegant dance steps. Vice Commander Chin is very kind to me, and the leader is also very supportive of me. And then? What about other members of the Knight's Order? Also, what kind of work have they arranged for you? Haishi put down his book and asked after him. For now, Miss Chin asked me to follow her for learning. Eula pursed her lips and responded with a lack of confidence. Ha! Haishi sneered in his heart, but seeing the girl's already somewhat low expression, he restrained his usual tongue and comforted her gently, anyway, this is not the worst start, is it? Since you made the decision to join the knights, you should have been prepared long ago. You're right, the rare encouragement from her younger brother reignited the girl's fighting spirit, and Yura clenched her fists heavily. One day, all the people of Mond will face us head dot on. The next day. Haishi got up early in the morning. But it turned out that Eula left earlier, and not only that, but she also left herself a breakfast. Looking at the golden crescent-shaped wave pie on the table, Haishi's mouth slightly curled up. The salty and fresh smoky flavor of animal meat explodes in the mouth, and the full and rich deliciousness sets a good start for a new day. At the entrance of the Deer Hunter restaurant. 
At a glance, Haishi found the lady with a long chestnut fried dough twists braid and a shimmy characteristic emerald green dress. Good morning, may I ask if this is Ms. Nazafrin? He walked slowly forward and elegantly greeted. Oh, it's me. Nazafrin showed some excitement as she suddenly turned around and exclaimed exaggeratedly, The grass god is above you. You must be the great hero who came to save poor Nazafrin, right? Um, Haishi Fui said, there's no need for that. My name is Haishi and I took your commission from the Adventurers Association. This is simply amazing. By the way, this is what that's called. Hmm. Does someone send blankets in the cold weather? Hmm sending charcoal in the rain. Nazafrin's emotions clearly did not completely calm down. I guess what you're saying is delivering charcoal in the snow. Corrected Haishi. Right, right, giving charcoal in the snow, this is really giving charcoal in the snow. Nazafrin nodded repeatedly. Cough, this is not important, let's get back to the point. I learned from Miss Catherine that you came to Mon to make spices, Haishi forced the topic back, it's like this. I have an ambitious good friend named Belvan. She once told me that she wants to make a seasoning that makes everyone happy. Nazafrin finally calmed down, said Belvan. As long as that seasoning is added, any dish will become exceptionally delicious. A great idea. Haishi softly praised. Really? I think so too. So I want to help her. Nazafrin was overjoyed by someone who agreed with her friend. She travels and studies, like a busy little bee. As her best friend, I can only stay at Sumi and can't help her much. So I want to do something for her. Based on the ideas she discussed with me before, I thought and thought again. Finally, I have come up with a way. I can also think of some seasoning formulas according to Balvenie's ideas, and then add these seasonings to the dishes to listen to people's opinions on these dishes. Although I definitely can't think of any happy seasonings, if I can give these feedback to Balvenie, she said. With her intelligence and talent, she can definitely be helpful, so, what is my task? Um. In fact, although I have come up with some seasoning recipes, poor Nazafrin doesn't know anyone in Mond. And I'm not a professional adventurer either. Collecting so many ingredients is too difficult for me, no less than a powerless vegetable bird venturing into the gold-plated caravan's lair alone. Nazafrin said with a bitter face. Haishi did not inquire about what the Gilded Brigade was, even if he had no memories of his past life. With the heritage of the Lawrence family, he still knew about this unique profession of combining mercenaries and robbers, which is unique to Sumru. No problem, so the first step is to collect materials, right? What do you need? Can you make a list for me? Haishi grasped the key point and asked. Of course, let me take a look, um. Nazafrin took out a thick notebook, flipped through it for a moment, and read, We need fallen plums, hooked fruits, mint, goldfish grass, small lampshade, dandelion, and Cecilia flowers. Have you captured all of Mon's unique plants in one fell swoop? Haishi took over the list and said, No problem, please wait here for good news. As soon as the words fell, the great adventurer panel immediately gave a prompt. Accepting Adventure Mission Fragrance comes from the West, complete all tasks to gain 10 adventure experiences, and Sumeru's adventure reputation plus 10, great, as long as you finish this order, you can start a new exotic trial. Haishi is in a happy mood. End of this chapter Chapter 3 Fragrance comes from the West You are listening at NovelFull.audio the source has no content or has errors. Chapter 4 Exotic Trial, Open You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Exotic Trial, Open With the help of Angel Amber, Nazafrin's commission was ultimately delivered perfectly. Adventure Mission Yu Xiang come from the West to complete, Adventurer's Experience plus 10, Sumeru's Adventure Reputation plus 10, detected that the Adventurer's Experience has reached the upgrade standard. 
please complete the trial as soon as possible. Before the trial is completed, adventure experience can continue to accumulate, but will not be upgraded. Looking at the line after line of prompts popping up on the adventure panel, Haishi secretly punched and his handsome face was filled with a satisfied smile. Thank you, Sister Amber. This is the dish I personally cooked for you. Eat it while it's hot. Ha, huh, Zaya Hixi is so sensible. Amber Yuan burst into a full smile, and the rabbit's ears on top of his head flickered. Then I'm not polite. Hmm, um, 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 um. I don't know what's going on. After eating the food you made, I feel like all the fatigue of the day has disappeared. The fiery little angel stretched lazily and said, Our grandpa said, when you're full of energy, it's best to spread the wings of the wind and soar freely in the sky. How about it, Eula, little Haishi, do you want to come together? Okay. But it's better not to be in Mon City. Haishi agreed without giving Eula a chance to refuse. Anyway, today was still a small utilization of Angel Amber's enthusiasm. A restored Northland smoked chicken is not enough to express gratitude. Let's play with her for a while longer. That's for sure. I'm a reconnaissance knight, remember the flight rules clearly. And Bai patted his chest and said, let's go to Mingguan Gorge. I'm telling you, flying over the fruit wine lake from Mingguan Gorge is a rare experience, you can't help but try it. I don't know who set the record for the most times a flight license has been revoked. Yura muttered to herself while being pulled out of Mon City by Amber and Haishi with one hand. The experience of accompanying Amber to leap over the fruit wine lake is indeed fresh and exciting. If it weren't for the good swimming skills of a few people, the Shifeng Knights would have held a memorial service tomorrow. The siblings returned home soaked all over. After taking a shower, Haishi changed into clothes and sat on the sofa. When Yula came out wrapped in a towel, she said, Sister, I have something to tell you. Hmm. Yula shook her ice blue short hair, her amber like eyes shimmering with misty water vapor. I'm going on an adventure tomorrow and will be back in about two or three days. Where to explore? Yula casually asked while wiping her hair. Due to joining the Westwind Knights, Yura moved out of the Lawrence family, while Haishi naturally followed her sister. After all, in his eyes, the Lawrence family, apart from their parents, couldn't compare to Yura's hair. Um. On the other side of the snow mountain. Perhaps my previous adventures were too easy, so the gods couldn't see my passion for adventure. This time, I will definitely win their favor, said Haishi, spreading his hand as he announced the location he had already planned Eula knows that Haishi is resentful of his lack of divine eyes, and it is not sudden for him to make such a decision, but Snow Mountain is not a joke. She furrowed her brows slightly and sat down next to Haishi, saying, do we have to be so radical? Don't worry, I'll just go around the periphery first. Haishi took out a bottle of cold-resistant medicine and said, look, I have made sufficient preparations, there's no problem. Well, anyway, you may not necessarily listen to what I say. Yura sighed and took Haishi into her arms, but you must promise me to come back safely. Don't worry, sister. Haishi replied with a resounding voice. The next day, at dawn, Haishi put on his hunting suit, draped in a linen cloak and hood, and headed towards the direction of the snowy mountain. The reason for choosing Snow Mountain is not only because it allows him to disappear for two or three days without any delay, but also because the northwest corner of Snow Mountain is located at the junction of Mond and Liyue. As long as you cross the ridge and guard the secret realm, you will reach Liyue's territory. In addition, the power components inside the snow-capped mountains are mixed, with the filthy blood of the demon dragon Durin, the ban of the cold sky nail, and a destroyed silver ancient kingdom in summary, it's not easy for anyone who wants to monitor here. Although knowing may not necessarily be useful, making every effort to conceal one's own uniqueness and not being discovered too early is the innate caution of Haishi. Putting away the wings of the wind, 
Haishi looked at the young rock dragon lizard that was rushing towards him in a clump of wheels. He shook his head slightly and said, I've been waiting for you for a long time. He reached out and took out a glass bottle from his pocket, seized the opportunity, and smashed it hard to the ground. Freeze it for me. His water vapor and ice mist spewed out simultaneously, freezing the young rock dragon lizard that had broken through the ground in place. Let you drill down. Haishi curled his lips and clenched the sacrificial bow behind him, quickly flicking the bowstring. Although it cannot drive elemental power, due to learning from divine archery, royal archery can also shoot split arrows. Shwa shwa shwa. As Haishi kept plucking the strings, sharp arrows attacked the frozen baby rock dragon lizard like a storm. Ding 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 Soon, the young rock dragon lizard was covered in clusters of arrows, and when its frozen ice layer exploded, it fell to the ground and could not rise again. Haishi stood aside and waited for a while, until the nearby cold had almost dissipated. Then he took out a small hammer and walked to the side of the corpse of the young rock dragon lizard, starting to chisel and hit it. The real world of Tivit is not like in games, where monster materials will fall out on their own after being defeated. Whether it's the arrows of the Chiochio people, the bones of the rock dragon lizard, or the mora of the treasure thief group, they all need to be collected personally. The necessary knowledge for adventurers includes skinning, bone removal, scraping, intimidation, interrogation, and more. Collecting bone fragments from a young rock dragon lizard did not take much time. After packing the harvest into his backpack, Haishi scanned for a week and found that there were no new threats at the moment. He silently recited in his heart, open the trial. Before he could finish speaking, a pale blue light curtain unfolded before his eyes. The establishment of connections between different worlds is underway, the establishment of the transmission channel has been completed, and the time ratio is being adjusted. Time Ratio Confirmation 300.1 Tivit in the Outland, trial time of two years, Outland, the optional identities are as follows. 1. Zuan Gang Thug 2. Peaching Sheriff, please make a choice as soon as possible, while Haishi whistled, how could you be so generous this time? Compared to the explanation before the last trial, which did not provide any valid information, this time only from these two optional identities, Shanghai Shi knows where the opposite world is. Zuan and Picheng, facing the continent of Valoran. A world with a power system that is vastly different from Tibet, but not weak at all, and may even be superior. He took a deep breath and said, I have a premonition that this trial is the chance for me to truly transform. Let's go. Buzz. With a flicker of light, Haishi's figure suddenly disappeared from the original place. End of this chapter. Chapter 5. This kind of welcome ceremony is also too enthusiastic. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 This kind of welcome ceremony is also too enthusiastic Dong 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 Pop 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 Pai Li Pa Pai Li Pa As soon as Haishi regained his senses from the bizarre passage of time and space, he immediately fell into countless violent and noisy bombings. Smoke Blood, engine oil crying, cursing, groaning, oh my goodness, what exactly is going on here? He, who had not yet adapted to the new environment, let out a confused voice. Did he come to the battlefield? Bang! What's going on? Grayson said you're the top scorer in the shooting competition, that's your performance. A heavy slap on the shoulder and a thunderous roar echoed in the ear. Police, Sheriff. Haishi was startled, and a large amount of memories flooded into his mind, instantly making the scene clear. Zuan people launched an impact on the canyon bridge. He sank his mind and looked ahead through his goggles at the battlefield filled with smoke and haze, flames, and the scent of meat. Hurry up and shoot. The sheriff patted Haishi again and then shouted loudly, Little ones, don't be afraid. Shoot the bullets hard at those sewer mice. Time was tight, the situation was in crisis, 
and Haishi didn't have time to think more. He could only instinctively lift the gun in his hand. Although he has only used it in memory, he possesses the LV-2 Royal Archery and is adept at manipulating this weapon that only requires aiming and shooting. It can also be said that he is very skilled. Bang 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 bang, the barrel trembled slightly, and a bullet detached from the casing, accelerating through a spiral rifling and flying out of the muzzle. A wave of air emerged at the muzzle, and the gunpowder explosion produced smoke and flames spewed out from the barrel, with a long tail flame trailing behind the bullet. Bullets of small finger length fly at high speed in the air, breaking through layers of air waves and targeting the Zuan people across from them who are shrouded in the haze, shrouded in shadows and ragged but with astonishing momentum. Okay. Give me a hard beating. The muscular sheriff kept shuttling through the formation of the sheriff, constantly using his roars to motivate his subordinates to fight. This is not because he talks too much, but because it's not enough without motivation. Although the people of Peqing have always considered themselves to be of the highest quality in terms of economy, technology, and civilized etiquette, they have comprehensively targeted those mice who can only make a living in the gutter. But it wasn't until tonight that the sheriff understood the scene of those who used to shrink and hide in the sewer, fearlessly charging on the spire bridge. Even if it's a mouse, it can bite to death if it goes crazy. He couldn't imagine what the consequences would be if such a group of lunatics were to cross the bridge and rush into the city of Piltworth. Even he is like this, not to mention the younger sheriffs under his command. Except for a few senior executives such as Deputy Sheriff Grayson, most of them did not perform much better than the newly arrived and naive Hirsch. Although they possess weapons and equipment that completely crush the opponent, their morale is completely crushed by the enemy. But fortunately, their weapons and equipment were powerful enough. Even if they were caught off guard at first, they quickly moved back to their disadvantage after reacting. The security officers from Pichang are indeed not as fierce as those from Zuan, and can even be said to be some old soldiers. But even when people are forced into a hurry, they can do anything. Haishi fired at a constant speed while taking time to observe the situation between the enemy and us. Since he chose to enter as a sheriff of Pippi City, it naturally means that he is more inclined to stand in Piltworth's position. Although he knew that in the twin city states of Zuan and Pichin, Pichin was the one who was more at fault, and Zuan was often in a victim's position. But he came here to complete the adventurer's trial, not to become a savior. The amount of adventure experience gained depends on his popularity, and compared to Zuan, as the center of technology and trade in the entire Valoran region, Piltwave, known as the City of Evolution, is clearly more likely to achieve his goals. Even if there is a chance in the future to take the stage during the Evolution Day speech in Pi City, his reputation will spread throughout the world overnight. Not to mention, Peaching has a complete system of colleges and workshops, which is very suitable for academic or technical research. Haishi's knowledge of alchemy can help him rise quickly here. In contrast, although Zuan's alchemy technology sounds closer to alchemy, the environment there is too chaotic and not a place for people to study with peace of mind. If that's the case, what reason does he have to give up the Pichang that is more conducive to his own development, and only choose the worse environment of Zuan for reasons such as saving? What kind of yellow-haired fool is Haishi? At this moment, in Haishi's field of vision, the Pai Ching security team, having regained consciousness amidst the captain's roar, relied on their absolute advantage in weapons and equipment to push the Zuan armed forces that had just crossed the centerline of the bridge back to the opposite bank. Especially when the vehicle-mounted machine gun, a powerful weapon, was pushed out, the roaring metal storm quickly drew a halt to this sudden conflict. The sound of bullets piercing the air became increasingly dense the roar of the Zuan people has become increasingly sparse fragmented cries and howls mixed in a bloody smell, drifting far away, it's over. He made a judgment that the people of Zuan could only rely on their blood courage, at most catching the security team off guard. If the first wave can break through the defense line of the security forces, then when this turbulence enters the interior of Pichin, they will win. Unfortunately, the absolute gap in weapons and equipment between the two sides, like a generational difference, 
has caused their efforts to be in vain. Apart from dropping half of the bridge's body, they have been unable to achieve anything. No, I can't say that either. At least after tonight, Pai Cheng will pay more attention to Zhuan's threat, and if they want to do the same thing again, the difficulty will be super doubled. Some security officers began to cross the defense line with gas masks under the arrangement of the sheriff, to inspect the bodies of Zuan people on the opposite bridge and complete the knife repair. Haishi put down his gun, loosened his armor, exhaled a foul breath mixed with the smell of gunpowder, and shook his head helplessly. I didn't expect it to be such an exciting welcome ceremony. I don't know how those high dot ranking legislators will evaluate tonight's event tomorrow, whether it's to praise the security forces for their defense, or to scold us for allowing them to spend a thrilling night. What are you thinking? At this moment, a middle dot aged woman with dark skin walked over with a gun in her hand, her tone carrying obvious concern. Ms. Grayson. Haishi recognized her, the deputy sheriff of the Peaching Security Force, and also a well dot known sharpshooter among the sheriffs, his own shooting teacher. I'm thinking, maybe I'm not suitable for the job of a sheriff, it's just too exciting. Don't say that, child. Grayson patted his shoulder and comforted him, your performance tonight is already good enough. I have been a sheriff for over a decade, and today is also the first time I have encountered such a thing. The job of a sheriff is not as dangerous as you imagine. Perhaps. Haishi shook his head, clearly unconvinced. Perhaps in other places, violent institutions like the sheriff have great power, and the sheriff holds a high position of authority. But this is not the case in the City of Knowledge and Evolution in Piltworth. Apart from the members of parliament at the top of the city. State, scientists hold the highest status. Especially those scientists who can transform theory into practical products and make money. Status, wealth, and fame will all roll in. Joining the college and becoming a scientist is the most orthodox development path for the Peaching people. In contrast, the future of the sheriff is very worrying. Even if you can become a sheriff, that's it. So from the beginning, continuing to climb the security officer system was not part of Hirsch's future plans. Of course, orthodoxy belongs to orthodoxy, but just like more and more college students are unable to find jobs in reality, scientists are not so easy to become. However, since Ms. Grayson will take the initiative to care for herself, it indicates that their previous relationship was quite good. Even if this is just a relationship between excellent students and teachers, it is not impossible to fully explore it. After all, for those who are new to life and unfamiliar with the place, if they can borrow an extra point, they can borrow an extra point. With this in mind, Haishi took the initiative to inquire, by the way, Ms. Grayson. If I want to join the college, do you have any recommendations? Join the college. Grayson was taken aback and her gaze became serious. It seems like you really want to quit the security team. Yes, a hint of pain appeared on Haishi's face. I killed too many people tonight, and now their cries are all in my ears. The fifteen or sixteen-year-old boy's face, still green and tinged with black and gray sadness, completely ignited Grayson's kind. Hearted nature. You're right, everything tonight was too cruel, it's not something a child of your age should bear. She sighed and comforted in a low voice, all right, let me help you find a job that you can temporarily stay away from the front line, just as it's a way to change your mood. You should also think carefully and not make decisions on impulse. Okay. Sign the contract. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 New Jobs. Tutoring. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 6 New Jobs. Tutoring the warm sunshine in the early morning filtered through the gaps in the curtains and poured onto the young man's face, coating his already handsome sculptural face with a layer of light gold, making it even more ethereal and extraordinary. Haishi rubbed his eyes, sat up with a yawn, and glanced out the window in a daze. He was instantly awakened by the mechanical style of architecture that was completely different from Mon City. Originally, we have already entered the world of trials. 
He stretched his arms behind his head and stretched lazily before getting out of bed and pulling back all the curtains. At this point, the sun was about to rise to the center of the sky, and Piltwave officially entered the busiest and busiest stage of the day. Last night was really busy. Haishi sighed. After repelling the attack from the Zuan people, the security officers could not immediately disband and rest. Instead, they were asked to stay at the bridgehead all night on duty. It was not until dawn that I was able to leave and hand over responsibilities to the next group of people. So, when we reach a different world, we have to work overtime all night. Who can bear these days? After a simple wash amidst a murmur, Haishi put on a casual outfit and walked out of the apartment. Although the job of a police officer has been looked down upon by Haishi and feels that it has no future. But in any case, they also eat parliamentary meals. In comparison, at least their salary and social status are stronger than those of ordinary people in Pai Cheng. For example, this apartment building that provides free dining services is one of the benefits of a sheriff, and is most suitable for single people like Haishi to live in. Arriving at the restaurant downstairs, out of curiosity, he carefully observed the dishes offered at each window. Rye bread, smoked ham, cheese, unknown grilled meat cutlet. Doesn't seem to have anything special about it. After looking around, he casually took a glass of milk and a portion of hot dog bread and placed them on the tray, walking towards a seat by the window. As soon as I sat down, there was a sound of selling outside. Latest technology morning news. Dean Hammerdinger's new invention get ahead. Ranking of Academy Technology Stars. Give me one. Haishi waved to the children selling newspapers on the street outside and handed over two small copper gears. Oh. The child was clearly very happy. After receiving both the money and goods, he added a blessing, may the gears run smoothly, sir. Happy Evolution Day. Evolution Day. Haishi was taken aback and opened the newspaper. On the front page headline, there was a big Evolution Day, written in golden and red intertwined colors, with a photo of a big head with yellow hair and white beard attached next to it. Haishi knew that this was the founder of the technology city of Piltworth, the most respected member of the seven-member council that ostensibly held the highest power in the city, and also the dean of the Pittsburgh Institute of Technology. The great inventor, Hammerdinger. He is also the perfect candidate for every Evolution Day speech. No wonder those Zuan people had to rush into the pointed tower bridge last night. Haishi's lips silently wriggled. This is the day of evolution that all Madame Piltwald is proud to aspire to, and also the day of disaster when Zwan is submerged and half is reduced to the next city. If I were from Zwan, I would definitely choose to cause trouble on this day. After breakfast, I walked out of the apartment. As far as I could see, bright flags were hanging between the buildings, and the narrow streets were filled with a festive atmosphere. The golden and red flag is embroidered with gears and keys, flying at the top of the distant tower. That's the busiest star avenue in Pichon, and the podium for the Evolution Day speech is located in the center of the avenue. However, this kind of pertwaf is really prosperous and full of sense of technology, but Heishi can't see the shadow of Hex technology. It should be noted that even since the explosion of the strait, Piltwave has become a substantial transportation and commercial hub in Valoran, with daily port cargo throughput increasing day by day. But to truly take on the title of City of Evolution, one must wait until Hicks Crystal is widely promoted and used. Especially with the emergence of the Hicks Flygate, the power contained in the Hicks Crystal to pry time has greatly accelerated the speed of goods flow in Pichon, connecting the entire rune land more closely. But now, the huge aperture that can be regarded as the symbol of Pi City does not appear in Haishi's field of vision. Coming early. Haishi frowned slightly. You know, Hex Technology, or Hex Crystal, was his biggest target for this test. If Pai Cheng hasn't started researching in this area yet so this city has very limited value for itself. Maybe it's better to go to Zuan to study alchemy transformation technology for higher profits. Just as he was pondering, a call came from behind. 
Haishi. Following the sound, it turned out to be Deputy Sheriff Grayson. Good day, madam. Humph, stinky kid, did you forget what I told you yesterday? Miss Grayson's tone is not very good. Ah. Haishi was a bit confused. After recalling for a moment, he tentatively asked, Are you saying, new job? So fast. Of course. Who do you think I am? Grayson smiled heartily and patted Haishi's shoulder. I recently took on a private job. A child from a wealthy family wanted to learn marksmanship from me, and he gave me a lot of money. I had planned to go there myself, but when I thought about it, you might be closer in age to that child, which would be more convenient for communication. Besides, your marksmanship is already better than mine, isn't it? Um. You're too modest. Haishi was taken aback, and memories of the last sheriff shootout contest flashed through his mind. That time, the two were divided equally. But throughout the entire competition, Haishi never used split shooting, which means he kept the score. From this perspective, it is not a problem to say that his marksmanship surpasses that of Grayson. He he, the disciple's marksmanship surpasses the teacher's, which is not something that would embarrass the teacher. Grayson rubbed Haishi's blue hair and sighed, I never understood why you were hiding. I thought about it all night yesterday and realized that the idea of leaving the law enforcement team probably didn't just appear last night, did it? Sorry, Teacher Grayson. But rather than becoming a law enforcement officer, I would rather become a scientist. I have also saved some money in the past two years, said Haishi in a hesitant voice, hee hee, that's the second reason why I recommend you to replace me. Grayson blinked his eyes and showed a rare cunning on his face. If you really have a talent for research, then let's do it well in front of Caitlin. Their family invests in many scholars from humble backgrounds every year. Seizing this opportunity and achieving success is not impossible. Katerin. Upon hearing this name in Pichin, Haishi had an inexplicable sense of familiarity. That's right, the child who is about to become your student, Katerin Juriman. End of this chapter. Chapter 7. Give her a little shockwave of archery. You are listening at novelfull.audio. The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 8. On the 16th of that year, at the Peaching Evening Party, Humble as a Servant. You are listening at novelfull.audio. The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 9. The Fantasy Ideas of Gem Technology. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 9. The Fantasy Ideas of Gem Technology The Next Day. Haishi got up early in the morning and tidied up the room that had been disturbed by the cooking alchemy experiment he had done in the room last night. He rang the bell and called for the waiters to clean the pots and pans. After that, he brought his police rifle to the German estate again. Anna, the maid, opened the door for him. Madam is still resting, but Miss is already in the hunting ground. Please come directly with me. The two of them bypassed the luxurious castle like main residence of the Jiraman family and arrived at the place where they had sweated yesterday. Haishi, this way. Miss Caitlin waved her hand full of energy and called out. In the thin morning mist, her clothes were wet with sweat or mist, looking like she had been practicing alone for a long time. To be honest, Haishi was a bit surprised. Because from his observation of the Battle of Two Cities in his previous life, it seems that this noblewoman does not like the hypocritical elegance of those who belong to the nobility, but prefers violent armed forces. Otherwise, why bother joining any law enforcement team with her identity? Being honest and practicing social skills in the community, familiarizing oneself with the family's business operations, and waiting to take over as a member of parliament is the right path. However, it seems too arbitrary to judge a person's personality solely based on a single film. When elegant dance steps are combined with practical marksmanship, this charm cannot be denied by Caitlin. You're late. When Haishi came to Caitlin's side with a gun in hand, the young lady complained softly. 
I thought you would be very busy last night and worried that coming early would disturb your rest. Haishi shrugged and explained. Who would like an occasion where everyone talks with a mask on? Katharine pulled the trigger and gracefully spun, if it weren't for my mother's insistence on taking me, I would definitely have practiced here all night last night. Um. That's not necessary, Mississippi. Haishi shook her head slightly as she listened. Caitlin now was like a child addicted to new toys, full of passion, but Mrs. Gillerman wouldn't indulge her so much. For people like them, their combat ability is not as important as tea tasting, painting, and flower arranging. At least those things can still cultivate sentiment and cultivate the temperament of a lady from a wealthy family, while fighting can only distance Caitlin's image from the traditional noble daughter of a legislator. Even if the new skill taught to her by Haishi is elegant enough, it is difficult to break such prejudices. No need for that, Haishi smiled and said, the best connection is when you are full of energy and focused, and when you are tired, you should rest. Whether it's work or life, a balance of work and rest is the best rhythm. Ha, you really should go talk to Jess about this. Caitlin sneered, that guy only stays at home every day doing experiments and goes to the boiler to forge iron. Despite being a scientist, he trains himself to be even stronger than you sheriffs. Jess. Haishi was puzzled. Jess Talis, my playmate, used to practice fighting with me often when I was a child. But since my mother decided to fund his research, his visits have become less and less frequent. At this point, Caitlin was clearly a bit unhappy, but she immediately gave a sly smile and said, but I specifically asked someone to notify him to come this afternoon and show him my new technology. The girl's thoughts were almost undisguised, just wanting to tell Jess. If you don't play with me, I can find better people to accompany me. Of course, Haishi also saw it, but he didn't have any unnecessary thoughts about being seen as a tool to attack Jess. On the contrary, he was excited to be able to contact Jess so soon. As I mentioned before, the rune land is very large, and the power and upper limit here may not be inferior to Tivit. However, if we exclude routes that involve using special powers to transform the human body, there are not many ways for Haishi to choose to improve himself. Why exclude the route of strengthening the body? Because the power rules of Tivit and Rune Land are vastly different, the human physique may not necessarily be the same. The magic and true energy here may not be useful in the world of Tivit. Moreover, most of these renovations are irreversible, and if any problems arise, it will cause a lot of trouble. On the contrary, it is the technology enhancement route of Pichin, because they are all external objects, even if they fail, the impact is not significant. Moreover, the biggest advantage of technology over magic lies in its ease of popularization and promotion, as many technologies are closely related. Even 10,000 steps back, Hex technology has failed in Tibet, and Hex crystal has lost its magical power. However, the techniques for researching and developing Hex crystals may not necessarily be applicable to other minerals or gemstones that also have high energy condensation. Science is science because every step is traceable. The thinking of research, experimental methods, precision machining techniques, and so on will not be completely abandoned due to the failure of a Higgs crystal. If the Higgs crystal doesn't work, can't we achieve success by using the same process to study a gemstone that contains special powers? Perhaps due to differences in the raw materials themselves, there may also be differences in results, but there will never be no gains at all. And in the Tibet continent, there is never a shortage of gemstones containing special powers. So, even without hex technology, I can't develop such things as free turquoise technology, firm topaz technology, burning agate technology when I go back. The essence of hex technology, to put it bluntly, is just to explore how to maximize the use of the hidden power inside hex gem. As long as one can learn this methodology, what does it matter if the raw material is Higgs crystal? Perhaps the power of time hidden within the Higgs crystal is indeed powerful and wonderful, but it is not necessary for Higgs to possess it. Being able to take away the original product is certainly great, but the technology developed is what he values the most. 
just like the culinary skills he learned in the first world, comparable to alchemy. By changing the world and raw materials, we can still make full use of them. Regarding the goal of this trial, Haishi had already considered countless possibilities. Now, it is time to get in touch with Mr. Jess Talis, the founder of Hex Technology and the future senator of Pichem. Before lunchtime, Jess arrived at the Jiraman estate. It can be seen that he is indeed familiar enough with the Cat Aaron family, and he eats every meal perfectly. However, today, Caitlin did not ask the maid Anna to prepare the meal because Haishi volunteered to invite her to taste a special dish. Mixing noodles, kneading noodles, rolling noodles, pulling noodles three servings of mushrooms two portions of snow mountain yak meat produced in Friedrad plus a little bit of culinary alchemy when a bowl of shanj and hot braised noodles is presented to the table, a strong sauce aroma hits the face, and just smelling it seems like one can feel the ultimate freshness. And when Caitlin found that after finishing her meal, the energy she had burned all morning seemed to be rapidly recovering. Her small mouth opened again to the size of a small cake, and she was shocked to say. How did you do it? End of this chapter. Is chapter 10 intentional or accidental? You are listening at novelfull.audio. The source has no content or has errors.